Alrighty, folks. J. Peter III with you for Vans Now. We've got more Suzerain today after the marathon session this weekend and everything that it entailed. Not a lot of warming up in the bullpen here. There's a lot of controversy around what's about to happen next. So let's go to Benfi and see what happens. Our motorcade slowly made its way towards the magnificent Benfi High Art Center. Night was falling and the festival was about to begin. I flipped through the brochure that had given that had been given to us at the hotel. Monica's face was featured on the front page, but the schedule on the inside still said that Curtin Lest, Mayor of Enrica, will be making the opening remarks. My last minute announcement that my wife would be replacing Curtin must have caused some confusion at the print shop. I would think. The Benfi Festival was one of the biggest events of the year. It originally marked the start of the annual religious pilgrimage, a week long a week's long journey, still undertaken by devout nourists. But today it was better known as a cultural celebration that drew thousands of revelers to the city. There were film screenings, concerts, theater and dance performances, art exhibitions, and celebrity started nightly galas. The opening ceremonies were broadcast on TV and watched by millions. As the car, as the car slowed, a, cut, a coterie of reporters, a coterie, I guess, not coterie, but a coterie of reporters and security guards rushed to meet us. I turned my attention to Monica. She nervously eyed the waiting crowd. Don't worry, you're going to be fine. She gave me a smile, looking somewhat comforted. Thanks, Anton. I appreciate it. As soon as Sergei opened the door, we were enveloped by the war of the crowd. The next few minutes were a blur of handshakes, photos, and reporters' questions. Your own locusts cheered us as we walked the red carpet to the newly built art center. We followed the guards through the cavernous white halls until we came to a, sea of, a set of arched doors leading to the auditorium. We waited outside as security did a quick sweep of the area, then headed in. So, this is it. I will finally stand on the same platform as you. A platform where Swordland's women will have their voices heard and acknowledged for the first time. Good luck. The two of us proceeded to the podium. I spoke first, delivering a short paragraph about the importance of Benfi and the festival to Swordland. I didn't introduce Monica. Thunderous applause echoed across the auditorium as she stepped to the microphone. I exited the stage and found my seat right next to Curtin Lest. Ladies and gentlemen, as the First Lady of Swordland, I welcome all of you to the Benfi Festival. The crowd erupted again, clapping and cheering. Colonel Lips leaned over my ear and leaned over and hissed into my ear. Mr. President, I'm afraid you will, you have made a great mistake. There will be consequences. Are you threatening me, Curtin? No, I am merely telling what will happen. Your little stunt has lost you my support in the assembly. I kept my eye on the stage. When the applause subsided, Monica resumed her speech. The festival holds a very important place in all of our hearts. It is a celebration of art, music, theater, but above all, it is a celebration of the people of Benfi, of their free and open-minded spirit. As we, as we all unite for the festivities, we must not forget the values that have inspired them. Today marks the beginning of the Week of the Spirit, a time for vitality, growth, and new beginnings. The crowd was hanging on to her every word, but the mayor of Enrique and his entourage didn't seem as impressed. I stand on this podium today to speak about change, about a new beginning for our society. Sorlin calls itself a free country, yet half of its citizens still are still barred from enjoying the same freedoms that the other half takes for granted. I refer to myself and my fellow women. A rumble went through the crowd, scattered applause mixed with murmurs of discontent. To truly move forward, we must make a break from old traditions and strive towards equality for all, equal rights, Equal rights, equal pay, equal access to ac education. Enough! The entire hall fell silent. The mayor of Enrica rose and spoke. I will not let this woman besmirch the traditions upon which our great country was built. Curtain, get back in your goddamn seat before I knock you the hell out. Let's let this play out for a minute. I sat down and watched the events unfold. Current turns to the turn towards the audience, speaking loudly enough to be heard without a microphone. Mrs. Rain, what right do you possibly have to pass judgment on our value as a, values as sort of citizens? You are not a politician. You're not a speaker. You're merely a woman who's lucky enough to be married to the president. Your place is not at this podium. It is at home, tending to your husband and children. The crowd grew rowdier. Some booed and jeered at Curtin's words. Others whooped in approval. I, Monica froze completely. The audience grew louder. 
I had to do something. I walked up to the stage and stood beside my wife at the podium. The mayor was still standing defiantly in the front row. Mr. List, please calm down. Take your seat and let her finish. Now. I want to stand by as I sort of... I was not saying idly by as I sort of values are being tested. Especially by our own president and this harlot of a wife. Is rudeness a swordish value now? Is impropriety? I'm only doing what I feel is right to protect my country. And I feel it's right to have you thrown out. Guards! <laughs> Man, I wish we could, but we gotta let... We gotta, stand by, we gotta stand by our wife. We can't take control of the situation from her. You feel it's right to berate a woman? The president's wife at that? I give a dangerous sentence. They lead us down a dark path. I'll show you a dark path. God! <laughs> it gives you so many chances just to throw his ass out. Your ideas, on the other hand, will lead us back to the dark ages. Without, without our traditions, we are lost. And without change, we are fossils. Now please, sit down. The crowd was booting the curtain loudly now. He looked around the room and let out a deep sigh. My apologies, Mr. President, Mrs. First Lady. I crossed the line. Monica had regained her composure by now. She took her place at the microphone. My heartfelt apologies to you as well, Mr. Lust. I assure you, my intentions were not to, was not to offend anyone, especially a senior member of the Assembly such as yourself, who has pledged his life to the betterment of the country. Curls, Curtin smiled faintly. Monica turned to the audience. I hope one day we shall be able to set aside our differences as we have done today and walk towards a happier, brighter future for all assortless citizens, male and female alike. We must all remember, the future cannot exist without the past. And I believe we are witnessing the meaning of our glorious past and our bright future right here in Benfi today. Ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to officially open the Benfi Festival. I'm more no West Korea. Vector and sister, everyone in the hall, including Curtin, finished a decades old saying, and that's why you let your wife have this moment. The crowd erupted into cheers. Even Curtin started clapping. People started chanting Monica's name, and the band broke into the official festival anthem. The opening event was finally finished. But I knew Curtin would never forget what happened today. He better not. Because I could have had him thrown out like three times! <laughs> Overall, that worked out very well. He's not a stupid politician, at least. When deploying special forces to Vernon, President Smolak has announced that the city of Vernon has been put under curfew along with seven other towns in the northeast of the country. The Vedic Army has deployed specially trained military forces to combat in the, in the, to, <laughs> a militant organization known as the Blue to Freedom Front. That's the smell of ethnic cleaning in the air. Reports from our border in the Vedic city, Vernon, show that there are th about a thousand people running away from the Vedic military towards the Swordish border. Yeah, I imagine. Protests and looting. Oh. Protests and looting continues in the city of Narges. The police reports that the violence has been minimized and the situation is mostly under control outside of the big cities. Several militants were hiding amongst the protesters and are being watched closely. Good. Keep an eye on them, boys. Right. Downtime at home. The fallout, I'm assuming. It felt like an eternity since the Benfi Festival. Has it really only been less than 24 hours? I was at home now, drinking an afternoon coffee on the, my balcony. A second newspaper is laid by my side. I picked them up one by one, reading and rereading the articles about the festival. Some of the papers came out in full support of the First Lady for a brave speech. Other took Curtin's side. Nearly all of them agreed that the First Lady had acquitted herself very well following the interruption. I was putting the last newspaper down as Monica joined me on the balcony. Listen, can we talk for a bit? Of course. What is it? Monica sat down and picked up the nearest paper. She pointed to a particularly insulting headline on the front page. I never in a million years would have wished for this end. I just wanted to thank you for supporting me and apologize for creating such a spectacle. All I wanted was to bring the people of Sortland together the way you are able to, but not like this. Her eyes were getting moist. A single tear fell onto the newsprint.
I leaned forward and wiped her tears from her eyes. She clasped my hand to her face. Oh, Andy. Her eyes filled with gratitude. I see she slept as little as I had since the festival. Thank you. One more thing. You know how stubborn I am. When I gave that speech, I saw hope in the eyes of all the women in the audience. This is the right path for me, Ed. I want to officially adopt this cause as First Lady. I should get involved in politics, not just give impromptu speeches. I could even help your education minister with those reforms she's working on. I know this is something you're passionate about as well. Can I count on you? Of course, my love. I'm looking forward to working closer together. Oh, Anton, this means so much to me. Monica hugged me tightly, and I felt some of the past day's tension melt away. Thank you. North came from the balcony door. We both turned our heads to see Deanna standing there. Mama, I'm hungry. <laughs> Let's go to the kitchen, baby. We'll make Papa the best snack ever. Yeah! I left the balcony and returned half an hour later with a large cookie. Then I had written my name and icing on it. As I sipped my coffee and nibbled the cookie, I thought I had made the right choice. Things were going to get harder, but at least my life at home was somewhat peaceful. And that's why we did it, Miss Tori, because we need peace in the homestead. Economic report from Lockerbie, the Ministry of Statistics, along with the Ministry of Economy and the Central Bank, has delivered a preliminary economic status report detailing that the recession is deepening and that the financial system is heading towards a potential collapse if we don't take serious action. Mr. Hall said the situation was dangerous. Very, very dangerous. We need that railway to finish. Occasion access to earlier base preparations began an earlier Air Force base to expand the hangars and restructure the security of the air base in order to welcome Arcadian planes for the, in the short future. Arcadian security and logistics professionals have already been welcomed to the base to work with shortage officials. We've got budget allocation for the shortage armed forces up. And forming the anti-corruption police. But first, the news. Benfi Festival is now in full motion, and the festival goers are enjoying the many attractions set up. However, this year's Benfi Festival started eventfully. The First Lady's opening speech was interrupted by the Mayor of Enrica, Curtin Lest, who stood up to the remarks made by the First Lady. Mayor Lest has then continued with his, had then continued with his disrespecting accusations and tone, incurring the wrath of the crowd. President Rain has inter, had interjected in the developing situation and saved the day by calming the attendees. Mayor Lest's disrespect would surely end up damaging his already declining reputation after the event. Lock of End Times is pretty center center right, so if they're saying he went too far, I think we're going to be okay. That also may influence uh, the speaker, Miss Tory, because you don't want to stand in the way of an idea whose time has come. To determine the current situation of the military and spending policy, we, had a me we held a meeting in the White Room. Peter, Vulcan, and Yosef were seated. General Vulcan, Mr. Lancey, let's start with the meeting. Very well, Mr. President. We have prepared a briefing to convey further details about the current situation of our military. First off, we have received an updated communication from the Arcadian Military Command. Their plans are being moved into LRA Air Base as we speak. Under our supervision, of course. Good. Make sure you keep an eye on them. Of course, Mr. President. Okay, we got a little stuttering here. I do apologize. Just, uh... Honestly, I think that's even a game. I'm showing pretty good stats in OBS, so... Oh, well. Maybe it's just me. Now, let's move on to our military. Which branch would you like to know about? What is the situation of our army? According to the latest reports from Cap Strong Arm, currently we have six armies totaling up to approximately 400,000 active troops. Which is a good amount. The real issue we are having is qu quality, not quantity. What is the current equipment status? Our army is quite outdated by today's military standards. Most of our equipment is two decades old. To make up for our lack of modern military equipment, we resort to large numbers of soldiers, which is not really a long-term solution. I've been trying hard to reduce the negative effects of this problem. We don't need a modern innovation program. A standardized purchase of lacking equipment would do. We, we would need more funding towards expanding the military size, otherwise our army will be seen as weak. Where exactly is the army deployed right now? The first army is stationed at the, at the Lesbian and Valen borders to protect the way in the central regions of Sortland. The second army, our strongest force, has been situated by the Rumberg border. 
Second Army has a large mountain commando force, and it is the best equipped army because they are facing Rumberg. Third Army near the Agnolian border and coastal areas facing Vogel. Due to our better past, we generally keep a coastal defense force. Although many years ago, the decimation of our fleet is still not forgotten. How do we compare to other armies? Rumor fields about six armies, amounted, amounted to a million soldiers. Let's be a field five armies, which amounts to 800,000 soldiers. Boston fields one army of about 140,000 soldiers. Lesbia would be. Le Damn, Lesbia. <laughs> Valen fields an army amounting to 100,000 soldiers, and Ignolia fields two armies with a total of 200,000 soldiers. So, just on ground forces alone, if you were to just go the Western route and team up with the ATO, which is Lesbia and Ignolia, you can have the backing of about a million soldiers just with them. Which. That's not anything to sneeze at. That's why diplomacy comes in handy. David Weesey is correct. The sheer size of Rumberg's army is because they're of, of their force Yeah, Let me try that again. The sheer size of Rumberg's army is because of their force conscription laws. Due to their massive gold reserves, they're able to avoid it. On the other hand, the Lesbian army is the most advanced followed by the Vauxlandian army. Both of these countries put a lot of money in modernizing their military. I'm curious about another branch. Very well. Let's talk about our Navy. Our Navy currently constitutes 59 ships, with a total of 60,000 sailors and support staff. As you know, these ships are commanded from our main naval base in Conrad, where our flagship SN Renan is docked. Which seas do our Navy currently patrol? We are patrolling the Marquian Sea, the Great Strait, and the Antatian Sea. I hope I pronounced that right, because I'm not trying again. Our Navy protects all of our coastal regions, however, to make sure we are not thinning out our defenses. We prioritize certain regions over others, like Greater Holesword. We often patrol the routes that are closest to the shipping lanes, especially Marking, the, Marking Street, the Marking Sea and Great Strait. The amount of cargo that goes through that area is eye-opening. Another thing to note is, after the takeover of Helgeland, where our Navy has led an, where our, our Navy has led an incursion operation to protect Agnolia, we also take part in some joint naval drills as well. How is our capability and power projection? The truth is, we are limited to our near region due to the size and technical, technological level of our naval, sh naval ships. If we have modern support vessels, we could participate in international operations. That's right. We still hold some power, though. If need it be, we could block the trade at the Marquette Sea. To make up for our weakness, allying, allying ourselves to a naval power could also help protect the seas. How does our navy compare to others? Our navy is dwarfed by the size of the Vaxlandian navy, which has 194 ships, and the Agnolian navy, which has 81 ships. We only, we only surpass Lesbian in terms of our navy, as they have less than 30 ships. Wow. They, they are, I think they're nearly landlocked. As you see, the situation is dire, but the solution is not just more ships. To make a truly better navy, we need to equip our ships with modern radar and sonar systems. More outdated ships won't mean much. I love this soundtrack. Let's hear about the other branches of the armed forces. Which one? Can you provide the details of our, on our Air Force? Our Air Force currently has 410 planes in the inventory, out of which only 140 are jet planes that are not in great condition. 30,000 pilots and support staff work in the Air Force, and they are commanded from the Mark Air Force Base in Ellery. <clears throat> What are our operational capabilities? Our planes can bomb targets within, 400 kilometer within a 400 kilometer radius of their airfield. They have medium range and semi-effective nighttime bombing capabilities. At any time, we can field seven air wings composed, composing a total of 130 aircraft that can operate in combat duty. That is enough to subdue most targets. In terms of our bombing capability, we have an average of 100,000 meters of precision. This is not great, but it is still within the effective radius of the bombs. How experienced are our pilots? Our pilots have average experience. They have a total of a 450 hours flight time with their craft because they're, before they're qualified. This gives them more than enough time to get used to it. This is low compared to, to the 1,000 to, to 
15,000 Arabs in other countries like Arcadia, United Cantana, Lesbia, and even Valsland. Normally, the hours per pilot should be higher, but due to the lack of funding, we can increase the training times. Fuel costs are rather high. How does our Air Force work together with other military branches? Air Force is trained as an independent tactical support branch, which means it assists other branches but doesn't collaborate. This does cause some issues like friendly fire and miss close air support opportunities. There are ways to pr improve collaboration with joint operation rooms. Something to think about, surely. Any specific ones you want to know about? Actually, let's move on. Let's. He cleared his throat. The Ministry of Defense is disappointed about the lack of additional funds. We know that keeping the same budget for the military will cause some concern for you. Peter's actually a very good politician when he's not drunk and chasing tail. The military is important, but it's not a priority right now. How come a matter of defense has not been prioritized as more important? Especially with the current political climate. We know that there have been high hopes, but the president has made his decision to prioritize other branches. We are stuck between a rock and a hard place without money. The military suffers from budget overextension in order to keep up with other countries. Yosef lets out a long sigh. No use complaining now, Vulcan. Let's look at what we can do with what we have. I have been planning to improve the quality of the, our, of the armed forces by buying better military equipment. How would that be possible without funds? It won't be. There is one way. If we relieve half the forces, that could create enough of a surplus that we could invest in new equipment. Quality over quantity. I like it. Vulcan's eyes widen. We are barely matching the size of half our neighbors, while the other half have armies two times bigger than ours. How on earth we're discharging half the armed forces and then buying new gear to solve our defense issues? Vulcan raises valid questions. Quality over quantity is the right strategy for the future of warfare. Having a large force doesn't, necessi ne doesn't necessitate superiority. A reduction of the army would cause more unemployment, which could hurt the administration. What do you think, Mr. Uh, Mr. President? Reduce size and buy better equipment with the surplus. Let's reform the army and create a better, a better equip, a smaller, better equipped force. Now, let me explain why I made this decision. A, it is cor he's absolutely correct. That is the wise thing to do. Uh, in at this point in the Cold War. Having a large army was a sign of impotence, more or less. You could have the largest army in the world, but if you didn't have enough allies behind you and modern equipment, you could get wiped out uh, with enough time. So it, he's absolutely right. Moreover, at some point in the game, you have to throw Yosef a bone. Like, you can't just keep saying no to him because at, he'll feel like you're an idiot. So especially when he makes good suggestions and puts out good plans that are long-term beneficial to the country, the worst thing you can do is say, hey, Yosef, shut up. So, especially with us maintaining the budget, doing it this way will go a long way. Excellent. I shall begin the plans immediately. I can hardly say that I welcome this change. Yosef and Vol can look at each other. That will be all for today, then. Good work, everyone. I'd like to extend my thanks for your attendance. The meeting concluded as the sun set over the concrete jungle. That was whole sort. So yeah, we'll get a... There'll be a little bump in unemployment for a minute, but once the economy gets back up and going, we should be fine. The Moon Pass has announced a reduction in the military size and the major restructure of the Swords of Armed Forces. The Ministry of Defense announced that the work has imme immediately begun to adjust the forces and maintain force capability under the new changes. The Chief of the Armed Forces, Vulcan Kruger, has called, a major has called this a major challenge to the integrity of the military, warning that nearby threats are watching the developments closely. The General Staff has voiced concern about the military application of the changes. The pilots assured that national security will not be compromised. Second Cantana Satellite of Space, Chairman Liam Malyanev addressed the world announcing that a second su successful satellite launch from Rost Rost 
Rossiner, Rossiner, Rossiner Air, Air Base, which has now reached low Earth orbit. The chairman, president, scientists, and the UCOM, UCOM, UCOFM, UCOMs, that's kind of it, that allowed the country to reach space a second time. The functionality of the satellite was confirmed when radio contact was established with after deployment. The Cold War is heating up. Adequately equipped military. Slowly but surely. And we'll back them up pretty soon because we should be starting our um, diplomatic tour fairly soon. So that'll back them up. The L1 railway running from Hoso to Lockheed is mostly complete with final preparations being made for the opening under Hall Construction guaranteed the timely delivery on all contractual obligations. With Hoso Road about to be closely linked to the country's biggest port in Lockheed, businesses in the region are expected to gain a significant boost and are already negotiating rail transport contracts with the transfer of goods. The right decision. The Ministry of Education is reporting that the massive overhaul to the education system is progressing slower than expected. <laughs> Only a few schools in Soylent will collaborate in the reduction of hours taught in citizenship, solidism, and nationalism subjects. Significant efforts are being made to lessen the political indoctrination in education, but are being met with resistance. Other changes that which were supposed to happen in the curriculum, pedagogical, pedagogical, pedagogical? Good Lord, my English. Pedagogical improvements like improved teacher-student relations and the emphasis on critical thinking development were able to start due to lack of workforce and funding. Minister Walter reports little progress with most schools delaying the transformation on political grounds. It's... I still think it's just going to take time. These things do not happen overnight. Alright. Cog Rice arrived for a meeting to discuss the new police force. After Livy informed of, of his arrival, Lucian opened the door and let him in. Hello, Mr. President, Mr. Glade. What a sunny day, isn't it? The weather outside was beautiful indeed. Clear sky and sunshine made the scenery look lively. I could even hear the sound, sounds of birds chirping from the palace garden. Good to see you, Carl. How have you been? It's been going okay. We have tackled many security issues, but there are still some to go through. But more importantly, the security situation in the country is much more stable, allowing people to return to a normal life. Please have a seat. We don't want you to feel uncomfortable. I'm used to being uncomfortable. You took a seat and corrected his posture. We have been, we have been informed of the establishment of the anti-corruption police under the Ministry of Justice. Indeed so. Minister Morgan has given me full authority to lead the new force in order to fight corruption from within. Congratulations. I hope we'll be... <laughs> Congratulations. I hope we'll be close partners in the fight against corruption. Sir. We have a tough and long fight ahead of us. It'll take years, but we will win. You can believe that. I want to make it absolutely clear. My belief in you as a leader is unquestionable. Minister Morgna, though not as inspiring as you are, has also shown great capability. The more I work with her, the more I'm convinced that she is a very motivated and effective administrator. She takes her work personally. Her motivations to fight corruption are real. Thanks to the, res the resource diversion... Uh, thanks to the resource diversion to her ministry, those objectives can now be met. Justice will indeed be served. Carling closed and lowered his voice ever so slightly. There are elements within our state that have ulterior motives. Elaborate, please. May I speak frankly, sir? Sure, you are, you are among friends. There are very powerful deep state forces inside the administration. Our investigations have just begun, but certain links we have discovered are troubling. Mr. Hawker has financial and other ties to certain figures. He's a dangerous man. Currently, we are collecting evidence to find out exactly what his network comp comprises. We've always suspected the existence of such a deep state. The real question here is, who in the government and cabinet is on Mr. Hawker's side? We need to find out who has ulterior, mot ulterior motives and root them out of the administration. I couldn't agree more. Anyone who corrupts our system and creates a parallel organization is a threat to Thornton. The most important subject here is the old guard establishment. They pose a direct threat to us. Once enough evidence, evidence is gathered, we should be able to begin the corruption trials if we want to. Hawker, Heron, and the rest of the guards in the Supreme Court, and the rest of the guard in the Supreme Court won't be able to be prosecuted at all. It seems we can't cut the head off the snake, but we will be able to strangle everyone around them. Besides that, there are other elements that we are aware of. The oligarchs seem to have some people on the inside as well. 
We have received some unconfirmed reports about Mr. Tusk having brought people in the having bought people in the administration. And they seem to be evading taxes through bribery and exploiting the gray areas in our laws. Our investigators in Esther and Narble have also found some suspicious financial activity from some of their corporations. If their tax returns were made public, were made to be were to be made public, it would help us track irregularities in their filings. Tusk is an issue, but he shouldn't be our primary target. There are bigger fish to fry. Very well, sir. Marcel Carante and HOS have also had a strong presence in the media and many other industries. There are some patterns we observe that are unusual. It really seems like they have a powerful influence in the majority of the so-called independent news organizations. They might not be so independent after all. Marcel offered me a deal before. It needs to be investigated. We certainly can. I wish we had more proof of the incident. It would help in a case against him. Carl sighed. Last but not least is opposition leader Franz Richter. We have received intelligence that he has, con has connections to Arcadia. Upon further inquiries, we can't see anything illegal here besides a mismatch of information. The old guard must have pushed, for pushed us forward. We shouldn't even consider moving on the, moving on the reformist leader in our position. There is nothing illegal, so why even talk about this? I wanted to disclose all the information that the ACP has. There are so many potential corruption cases here. Therefore, we need to pick a faction to focus on. We can't investigate everyone within the remainder of the term, of this term, and come up with come up with a thorough and compelling case. The most logical step would be to use the ACP to pressure either the oligarchs or the old guard. Where should we concentrate our anti-corruption efforts? <laughs> Obviously, we're going for the old guard. They are a problem, and they need to be rooted out entirely. If this country is going to move forward, anyway. Focus anti-corruption investigations on Hawker and the Old Guard. Yes, sir. We will focus our research and investigation on the Old Guard. Well, it has been decided. But that should conclude it, the meeting. I thank you for your time, Carl. It's a privilege to work with you, President Rain. Good day. Carl and Lucian left the room. We should see some fruit of that those investigations fairly soon. All right, time for our diplomatic maneuvering. A special police department has been formed to fight corruption within the state, businesses, and the police itself. The new anti-corruption police force, anti-corruption police, will be serving its duties under the Justice Ministry of Thornton. Neil Morton, Carl Greiser, and other government officials spent the past months building the anti-corruption department from scratch. The unit consists of officers from the General Police Service, the Justice Ministry, and the Directorate of Criminal Investigations. We're ready, said Carl Greiser, the newly appointed chief of the anti-corruption police. We're already conducting a crackdown at corruption within our state institutions. Our officers started working on the intelligence reports. Kind of straightforward guy. I trust him. Hopefully, he's not corrupted on his hunt for justice. All right. Soylent one's flight from Hothor to Stahlport took three hours but went very smoothly. We were about to touch down. David left his seat and came over while Simon was enjoying his newspaper. Looks like we're about to land, Mr. President. I looked outside. I could see Helgeland, the island between Vogsland and Agnolia. So many conflicts over a small piece of land. The island can barely sustain itself without outside help. I know. I was just thinking the same thing. Thousands of people died fighting for it. I wonder if it was worth it. I suspect it will be one of the topics that Mr. Van Horten will be will bring up at the bargaining chip. We must be careful. Helgi Land may be, might be under con, under the control of Magnolia, but the international community is yet to recognize it. For good reason, too. Nobody wants to make an enemy of Volkswagen, especially because of the support of United Cantana and CSP. I don't care who we're up against. We will cross that bridge when we come to it. We should try and look at the bigger picture. Simon folded his newspaper, got up from his seat, and sat right next to us. Aside from the point of Helgeland, we need to be careful with the additional request. 
According to the deal that was negotiated so far, they want to sell us their steel for a higher price, and they're requesting easier access to our agricultural market. In return, they're promising cash flow and investments, especially in the Aglam region. It's not hard to guess why. Precisely. A million immigrants in our Aglam region make up for a good chunk of the region's economy now. During the initial negotiations, they have brought up the topic of immigration many times. The fact that we have relaxed our immigration laws will help tremendously. Let's see if we can shake hands on it. The pilot made an announcement that the descent had started. David and Simon went back to their seats. I took another look outside the window. I could see Stallport, the capital city of Magnolia. The large docks of the city and the canals appeared closer as our descent continued. Stallport was certainly a fitting name due to stall meaning canal. A couple of a couple of minutes later, we finally touched down. The plane parked. I took a final look out the window. The welcoming ceremony for Magnolia was waiting alongside the red carpet outside. After the guards made their way out, I exited the plane. I waved at the crowd that gathered. There were many camera flashes. I started making my way downstairs. Prime Minister Van Horten was nowhere in, th in sight. Instead, I was greeted by the foreign minister. After shaking, after handshakes and a couple of photos. I moved to the car moved to the car where Sergei was waiting to make our way to the office of Prime Minister. Good day, sir. I hope the flight was comfortable. Yes it was. Thank you, Sergei. I got in the car and we made our way through the foreign streets. Our convoy was protected by Swordish and Agnolian guards in their vehicles. We began driving by the highway beside the port and saw dozens of dark guards and ships anchored. Some of the ships and machinery looked old. The city itself looked very gray and grim. The buildings had a touch of Rundberg, famous monarch, monarchy and architecture, with a mixture of sort of signature domes on the older ones. We were now on the main road of the office of the Prime Minister. It looks like they are not too happy to see you, sir. S S Sergei pointed out the crowd that had gathered on both sides of the street. It was a protest. They were shouting and yelling at our convoy. Some of them held signs written in Swordish. Sordish. must pay his debt to Agnolia. You know... I never knew Agnolians were so ungrateful. Not everyone sees a great leader like you every day. There have been many issues in Swordly. I don't know if I could call myself a great leader. Sir, humility is important, but not in this case. There were always, they were always scared of Swordly's potential. And now they are afraid of the lion leads Swordly. They are afraid of you. Not just that, but you're a man selfless enough that you would pay for your driver's children. A true leader, I dare say. How's little Anton doing? He's fine, sir. A strong boy. Takes after your namesake for sure. The convoy started slowing down. We have arrived, sir. The car continued through the gates while the security vehicles went the other way. We finally came to a stop in front of the door. So we got left the car and opened the car door. I exited and began walking to the door where dozens of press and the Prime Minister were waiting for me. I saw the PM much more clearly as I neared the door. It was shorter than I thought. <laughs> Mr. President, welcome to Agnolia and to the beautiful city of Stallport. Thank you so much for the warm welcome. It is great to be here. We just have for a handshake. The press surrounding us have been waiting for this moment. <laughs> like, we could really lean into it for the cameras. I could be a dick or we could just be normal. Let's just lean into it. We shook hands and I went for a hug, which was received well by the Prime Minister. The press went wild and took more pictures. He gestured to the entrance of the 200-year-old Parliament building. This way, please. We entered and the press followed us inside. I'd like to present you with a gift, uh, with a gift as a sign of friendship in between our two countries. And the sister showed up and immediately with a large glass, immediately with a large glass box in her hand. It contained a single parchment inside. This here is one of the first treaties written in between Sorlin and Agnolia. May it mark the renewal of our friendship today as well. This is an amazing gift. Thank you. Our photos were taken again. I adjusted at one of my retainers who was holding our gift to the PM. One of the first constitutions of Sorlin? A swordish bird puppy despite Martin's nose. <laughs> I love that this guy just makes you a dick if you want to. I think he'll appreciate the steel. Our gift was an ornament, ornament, ornamented ceremonial sword made with sword of steel. Ah, an excellent specimen. This must be hundreds of years old. It looks like this is sword of steel as well. Very fitting, thank you. The camera flashed once again. 
Let's go to my office. Follow me. I followed him and we entered the office of the Prime Minister. It was a room of wooden minimalist decoration. It was far more modest than I expected. We sat down. He leaned back and made himself comfortable. Sheesh. Thankfully done with the ceremonies. Are you not fond of these ceremonies? I think they're a waste of time, but alas, that is one of our jobs. He got up from the chair and moved over to the bar. There are many varieties of liquor. Would you like a drink, Mr. Rain? I wouldn't mind some magnolia and vodka. Ah, you know your drink. He poured the drink and gave mine to me before sitting down again. A true gentleman. I can respect that about you, Mr. Horton. That's, this is how we do things in Agnolia, Mr. Rain. I appreciate the kind words, but flatter, flattery alone won't sway me this day. First of all, I would like to say that I've been watching your recent changes to the immigration policy. I'm glad that you decided to keep it relaxed. Immigrants are very important for beneficial economic development, and we believe that very much in Agnolia. It was reassuring to see Sorland move to a more modern direction. Thank you. You took a sip from his vodka. So tell me, Mr. Ray, is Sorland a reliable trading partner to Agnolia? Of course, Mr. Van Horten. You can trust Sorland. Very good. Van Horten leaned back in further in contemplation. Let's change the course of our nations. First of all, if we shake hands on it, disagreement is going to be really beneficial to both of us. You should be able to solve your recession in no time with the investment and money flow coming from us. This is, as you know, on top of the reduced tariffs for trade in between our countries. Of course, in return, as discussed in between my people and your people before, you will allow us privileged access to your agricultural markets. You will be buying steel from us for a higher price, which is a small price to pay, really. That is the deal. What do you say, Mr. Ray? Okay. I should, if I am, if I remember correctly, I should be able to get him to change his mind on the negative to our budget in return to Helgi Land. I just don't know if it's, I just forgot if it's after this choice or right now. Screw it. I accept. Excellent. Before we dive into the paperwork for the trade deal, I want to offer you another possibility. I would like to expand our newly formed partnership. We have regional forces like Runeberg that has been imposing danger on both of our countries. I am of the mind that we must unite. So, by the powers bestowed upon me as Prime Minister of Agnolia, I'm offering a military alliance in between Sorlin and Agnolia. What do you think? Uh, very well. I accept. That is excellent to hear. Our ministers will go over the details later. Now that we have gone this far and are willing to enter an alliance, there is another topic I would like to bring up. As you know, Halji Land has been long contested in between Agnolia and Vaughan. Those warmongers want to take back the island. You know how the international community does not recognize our rightful claim to the island, including Sorland. We're better act to cement our alliance in announcing to the world that Sorland recognizes Helgen Land to be Agnolian territory. Hmm. See, it is contested. The problem is, is that I know we're not solving this problem today. We're simply not. You know what? Let me see if I can get that negative one off the table. You are asking too much. It is, it is understandable, but I won't push too much on the matter. We have achieved enough today. Well then. He stood up from his chair. Dang it! It was probably the last point. We'll see, we have informed we may be able to get Vaughn to the table. If we can get Vaughn to the table with that, I think we'll be happy. We must continue the official program. As you know, we will pay a visit to our founder's grave for another ceremony. Afterwards, we will move on to the state dinner. After you. As soon as we left the office, I briefed Simon and David on the outcome of the meeting. 
The rest of our state trip was full of fake smiles, handshakes, and incredibly long, incredibly long ceremonies, and even longer meetings between our ministers and their counterparts. When we came to the end of the trip, the way back was mostly silent. I couldn't help, I couldn't help but let out a sigh of relief when we touched down on Holford. It was time to discuss the good news. I got some kind of um, achievement. <laughs> I'll have to check that later. We've got a military alliance and a trade deal. My wish is that we could resolve the Helgeland dispute. That would be my wish. But we don't have the power to do that right now. Still got rioters, but it's taken care of. So I learned an Agnoli interalliance. So I'm entering a military alliance with Agnoli alongside a new trade deal between the two countries, which comes into effect into Tuesday. Agnoli and Prime Minister Van Horten told reporters that the alliance is a historic development that would benefit both countries economically and diplomatically. He also said that this will help both countries stay strong against external threats, pointing out that both countries co both countries concerned regarding their neighbor, Bloomberg. Apart from the military, Lawrence Sutherland will open its agricultural market to Agnolia with the new trade agreement. The deal will also see an increase in trade volume between the two countries, partic particularly, particularly in Agnolian steel. We will continue to advocate for continued fair trade between our countries in a relationship that has been extraordinarily beneficial to both Agnolia and Sortland, Van Horten said. He congratulated President Rain for bringing the two countries closer again. As a result of his recent Agnolian visit, President Rain and Prime Minister Van Horten have made a joint announcement that Sortland and Agnolia will enter an alliance. The ever-changing political landscape of Eastern Marcopa is about to change again. The effects of this alliance in the grand scheme will mean an increased trade and, more importantly, military deterrent against foes of the two countries. This is especially important following the heightened tensions in between Agnoli and Vauxhall. President Ray's Agnoli visit has certainly been fruitful for Sortland so far. Yesterday morning, Chancellor Psychopath, <laughs> Chancellor of Vauxhall Heigl, delivered a press conference in Helm about the escalated tension in Helgeland. During the press release, he said, Anolia's unlawful occupation of the island will not stop us from doing whatever it takes to protect our people living in Helgeland. He heavily criticized and condemned Prime Minister Van Horten, saying, We are dealing with an illegal occupation force, which doesn't refrain from entering our territorial waters without asking our permission. Van Horten is playing with fire, and if he is, and if he is not careful, he might get burned. Geopolitical will, will be watching the developments closely. I'm sure we will. There's... <sighs> I really do wish there was a way to play Peacemaker in this game, in, like in the base game. Like, if there were the DLC of this, and I'll probably be talking about this after the fact, but if there were DLC of Sorlin, not Sorlin, but Suzerain, I would want it to be with on the Helgi Islands. And if you have made, if you made all the proper trade deals and everything, you would be able to resolve it peacefully. Oh well. Now to Vaklavitz. Solon was fired from Hulsa to Vaklavitz. Took approximately five hours. Despite heavy turbulence, I managed to sleep a little. Let's have Simon and David. We landed at the international airport of the capital city of Bela. I am here with the finalized the trade deal drafted in between Solon and Bela. Shortly after our plane landed, the door opened and the sun blinded me for a moment. I stepped outside. I saw the soldiers lined up on either, of the either side of the red carpet. There must have been at least a hundred soldiers. The marching band started playing and the soldiers immediately saluted me. I saluted the soldiers. At the bottom of the stairs, Victor Smolak was waiting for me next to a military jeep with a few soldiers by his side. There were a few reporters on the side waiting at, with their cameras. He was a tall man, almost as tall as me. He was wearing large sunglasses and his attire was a regular suit, contrasted with the military attire of everyone else on the field. Mr. President, welcome to Vaklovitz. He immediately motioned for an embrace. We hugged and many cameras went off at the same time. He turned around for a couple of additional poses. Nice to see you, Mr. President. Now that the pleasantries are done, let's go. We will take the jeep for a tour. With another tune from the marching band, we boarded the military jeep. He sat in the driver's seat and I sat next to him. As we started speeding up, the soldiers saluted again. Richard Smolak saluted back. I did nothing. My security detail and Victor's security detail started following us immediately, alongside a, along with a team of reporters. We will go to the city center to see the opening of a statue. Who sat you? It's mine, of course. We kept making small talk about the flight and the weather until we reached until we 
start and we until we started making our way into the city center. On almost every corner, there were reporters taking photos of us. Oddly enough, every single street corner we took seemed completely empty. If our closet's always just empty. I had the locals close down their businesses because of your visit so we could enjoy the city more. There we are. We arrived at the city center. In the middle of a large plaza, there was a covered statue. Lots of people had gathered behind fences, and they were waving both swordish and valent flags. Victor waved back at them. My people have been very supportive of this visit, Mr. President. I'm sure you're a delight to see. The man came closer to the fences and started yelling at Victor. Oh, with my limited understanding of the Vedic language, I understood the words Victor and Murderer. Almost well, instantaneously, two soldiers showed up from behind the man and he was taken away. Thankfully, the sun is up today. Sun, thankfully, the sun is up. Today will be a good day for the reveal. What will happen to the man protesting you? Oh, which man? That one in the crowd? Don't worry about the details. He must have been a troubled fellow. Let's focus on the event. Oh, this guy's a psychopath. I take that back, uh, Ch Chancellor Hagel. You are not quite as crazy as this guy. We took our places, places in front of the statue. With a drum roll, the statue of Victor Smolak was uncovered. The statue was done pretty well, except that he was made more masculine. He was wearing a cloak and holding a sword in his hand. Excellent statue. Very lifelike. What do you think? Yes, it's... Very good. Very lifelike. Glad you appreciate the art behind it. Join me for a walk. I follow him through the streets. At every corner, more and more photos were taken. We stop in front of a pastry vendor on the street. Give me two strudels. The man behind the stand smiled and gave us two strudels. I put my hand on my wallet and brought up some money to give to the vendor. Hold up. Your money doesn't count here. I got this. Handed the money to the street vendor. The camera flashed again. Afterwards, we walked a short distance to the palace. Passing the gates to the, of the palace, we made our way into the main building made from ivory-colored stones. The old guard towers flanked the magnificent main building from both sides. The inside of the palace was very spacious with a very large chandelier hanging from, from the ceiling. Grand staircases made from the same ivory stone had red carpets on them. On both sides of the upper levels, guards stood with the traditional outfits of the old Vesic kingdoms. We finally reached the office of the President of Valen. The door closed behind us. The interior boasted gold ornaments on the walls, ivory colors and various jewels attached to different artifacts of old. As it was customary in Valen, we sat down on the carpet. Now we can talk about our trade deal. I nodded. But before that, he clapped his hands twice. We have stuff to do. Bring the Kisha. A few assistants immediately entered the room carrying a large ornamented Kisha. A well-known smoking instrument originated from Valen. They, they immediately lit it up, and the room was filled with the smell of tobacco. He held the smoke and handed me the Kisha. I will partake. It was probably the highest quality of tobacco I had ever smoked. I handed it back. He took another puff, filling the room with more smoke. So, Mr. President... Ah, that's too long. Can I call you Anton? Sure. And tell me, what do you really think about Romberg? They are a threat that needs to be dealt with. I agree with your sentiments, then. They are a threat to everyone in the region. I assure you their time will come. In due time, yes. For now, I have something else in mind. I'm listening. He clapped his hands again. Two assistants came in the room with a map of the border regions in between Valen and Soylent. He pointed at the border. Look, Blues and their so-called BFF are ca causing problems for me in this region. I know that they are also a problem for you as well. I will not allow these traitors to exist in my border. So I will hit them with all the might of Valen. These terrorists need to be destroyed. I call it Operation Bear Trap. What do you want from me? He grinned and lay back on a large pillow behind him. Here's the deal. I'll give you the best trade deal in the region. You give me your assistance crushing these ter you will give me the your assistance crushing the terrorists on the both of our borders. I need specifics. Sure. My spies have infiltrated BFF cells and they found caches of KA seventy fours. We traced them back to Rumberg. This alone justifies my retaliation to protect my country. 
Worst of all, we also found that similar shipments are going to Sortland. Yes, Ant. You see, this is not just Valen's problem. Let's take a step back and talk about what you will get in return. I propose you a no-tariff agreement, core investment projects, and oil. In return, you will assist me in destroying the terrorists in my country. In other words, you want to stomp out a minority and you want our blessing to get it done. Let's just be honest. There might be international ramifications. Hell with, inf hell with international ramifications. I'll protect my country. I don't care what they say. What I want for you in return for all the money and the resources is a joint operation in between our armies, in between our armies against the BFF. I took a moment to think about it. No. No deal. I won't. I will not participate in the genocide. It's too risky. I, I'm afraid I can't accept. Wait, Anton. Wait. Normally, I wouldn't offer anything else, but I like you. Here's my final offer. When the operation starts, with you or without you, there will be stragglers trying to cross the sword. We just want you to support the operation, even if you don't join. Even if you do not join, stop the terrorists from fleeing into your country, and you will have a deal. Simple, isn't it? So, what do you think? No. That's still like, if I close my borders to people trying to escape, I'm just signing their death warrants. I can't do it. No deal. I'm afraid I can't accept. That's unfortunate. I thought we could be friends. But you decided to leave Valen alone by itself. Such a shame. I'm sure a great leader like Saul would have accepted this great offer without a doubt. My sisters will show you the way. Goodbye, Mr. Rain. I nod and left. I returned to Sorland immediately. If I felt relieved to be back in whole sword. Yeah. Hold I hold I just I'm actually reading the letter for the first time. This is actually it's kinda of making sense to me now that I know what a lot of the words mean. That's kind of scary. Oh lord. We're jumping straight from the trade deals back to the constitutional reforms in the assembly. Let's go! I came to the Grand National Assembly of Solon to deliver a speech regarding the new constitution and asked for the support of the assembly before the upcoming vote. I walked quickly through the corridor halls giving my greetings to the people on my way towards the parliamentary hall. When I entered the hall, the assembly was in complete chaos with shouting and cursing between the parties. It was a heavy argument about the proposal made by an MP for the NSP. I took a seat inside the special area reserved for the ministers. Gloria was just shouting from her seat at the center of the hall as she hit the gavel three times, with each strike heavier than the one before. Order! Order! I saw, I saw a Kibner standing up from his seat and shouting towards the members of the PFJP. Mr. Kibner, calm yourself. Show respect to the procedures of this assembly. Despite our efforts, the argument continued for a couple of minutes before everyone took back their seats and finally went quiet. Mr. Kepner, next time I tell you to do so, either take your seat or leave the hall so we can proceed with the procedures of this assembly and continue our duties. Some MP from the NFP shouted back to her in protest. Honorable ladies and gentlemen, if you allow me to continue, she pointed at me, we have the president here with us today. He has asked to give an, an important announcement. The assembly fell silent. You have the floor, Mr. President. I, start, I walked to the stand as loud clapping started in the USP side. Honorable members of the Grand National Assembly of Sorland, I'm here today to raise important questions regarding our outdated constitution. Perhaps it is not expected of me to say this, but the president holds too much authority in Sordish politics. In order to strengthen our democracy, we must be brave enough to point out the injustices and faults of our constitution. I continue. Therefore, we propose changes to the Constitution to prepare Sorlin for a more democratic era. Applause came from USP and PFJP seats. We will rebalance the branches of government to ensure a more democratic process. I focus on... We'll focus on unity. It is more important than ever that we stand united as a nation in these changing times. I call everybody to be part of the change our people have been calling for. We all want to make Sorland better, don't we? Let's embrace democracy and unite under the banner of our people 
And surely Thorlin will be great again. Let's embrace the future. Just as I was about to continue speaking, Gloria Tory interrupted me. Mr. President, with all due respect, I believe Thorlin is already democratic. <laughs> Please don't interrupt me. We both know that our constitution is flawed. Tarkin Solomon's efforts can't, cannot be ignored. We must keep following the path he defined for the Swordish people. I'm sure the honorable members of USP will see that the president is acting rash by allying with opposition with the opposition to destroy the culture of Solomon that established Sortlin. That was the extent of my quick note. Thank you. The president will have the floor. That, the president has the floor. We are not here to destroy Solomon, nor our cultural values. Please continue your speech, Mr. President. I took a breath and continue. Ladies and gentlemen of the assembly, we must set aside our differences. Be part of a new era for Sorlin. Join us and support and join us and vote for our proposal. Let's write the future together. I decided to read a poem before I ended my speech. There is a destiny above destiny. There is God beyond existence or non-existence. There are songs to be sung in affection of our victories. Fear not when the dark falls, there is an artist painting the sun. Beyond the next morning, there is victory waiting to be won. The assembly roared with all kinds of different reaction. Some applause came from the PFJP and USPCs. Most of the others started making loud noises again. Thank you for the speech, Mr. President. I went back to my seat as many MPs asked to speak. First Richter was among them. Yes, Mr. Richter. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to thank Mr. President for his speech. We, the People's Freedom and Justice Party, stand in agreement with the need for a more democratic constitution. I would like to thank the ladies and gentlemen of the United Soilem Party for their more open attitude compared to past years. As long as Mr. President's words prove not to be just words, we will be behind this much needed movement for change. We welcome the attempt. I ask Mr. President to share the final cont contents of this proposal, of these proposals, as soon as possible. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Suddenly, Kazar Kibner started yelling from his seat. The president must have lost his mind to cooperate with the life of you, Mr. Richter. You and PFJP are nothing but puppets of Western interests. Order! Madam Speaker, I know you are in Madam Speaker, I know you are in agreement with me as well. Don't stand idly, idly there while this administration is making deals with snakes and undermining the in integrity of so Order, Mr. Kibner. How many times do I need to say? You're speaking out of t I demand to speak. Gloria gave him a stare, she looked annoyed. Very well, Mr. Kibner, go ahead. Mr. President, he looked directly at me. The Nationalist Movement does not agree with your priorities, nor the way you're trying to implement them. The National Front Party will not stand with you on your new constitution. Let it be known that the NFP's concerns are not included to this so-called democratic reform. So, thus, Mr. President, has no right to claim them as such. We will stand our ground against any attempt to bring down our established political culture and national values. Thank you. Kazara went back to his seat, but the Catholic Assembly continued. I asked to speak. Yes, Mr. President. Mr. Richter, I looked at him. We would, we'd like to have cooperation between our parties. Thank you for your support. We are looking forward to work with the PFJP. Gloria looked at me to see if I finished my response. Mr. Kibner, I looked at him. We are not specifically cooperating with someone, but everyone. We, a we ask that you also join us. Watch as he slouches his seat legs cross. Do not stand against change. Be part of it, Mr. Kibner. We can do so much more together. Thank you. Gloria looked at me to see my finish my response. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I got up from my seat and started my walk towards the exit. MPs keep shouting and responding to each other, creating a loud mess where nothing was legible. Order! Order! This topic is finished. We are moving on to the next topic. I slowly left the hall. The shouting could be heard from every corridor of the Grand National Assembly. Let's see what president holds too much authority. President Rand has called on the Grand National Assembly of Solon to support the upcoming constitutional changes and address in his address to the Parliament. The president's address came after a series of meetings with the USP, which, pro, which probably involved discussions about the new constitution. President Rand talked about the main points of their proposal changes and revealed that the current draft will be looked over again with leaders of the PFJP before it is proposed to Parliament. Perhaps it is not expected of me to say this, but the president holds too much authority in Swedish politics, said President Rand, criticizing the power of the office he's holding. The statement was made with surprise and was welcomed by a friend's of the PFJP. We must be brave enough to point out the injustices and faults of our constitution, said President Ray, showing he's willing to bring changes that would not, be, would not necessarily benefit his position. Walker wants Vauxhallian Navy over Helgeland dispute. Oh, great. The tensions between Agnoli and Vauxhallian kept climbing. Keeps climbing. The latest addition to the escalation happened yesterday on the Vax, Vagloslavian Channel, where the Vaxlandian ships started advancing on the perimeter around the island. According to Agnolian sources, yesterday in the morning, the Agnolia battleship Van Gilben had intercepted a Vaxlandian destroyer Stanison and warned him to move out of Agnolian waters. The Vaxlandian captain did not respond to the communication, but both ships backed away from the scene after several hours of standstill. Seeing this event as Vaxland putting pressure over the island, Arcadian President Dwight Walker warned the Vaxlandian Navy, We will not tolerate any attempts to trigger incidents on the international waters. I call Mr. Hegel, pull back your ships immediately. That's going to go hot sooner rather than later. This should get delayed so far. They've been able to get in total 121 signatures behind the proposal. Efforts are underway to increase the support to reach out to necessary members to get the 150. We're getting there. We are getting there. All right, folks. I think that will do for today. Got quite a bit done. You'll see which, where we're starting at in this particular chapter, or this particular turn. Well, when we come back, we have, the, the highway is finished. We have quite a bit to do. All in the capital when we get back. Reports, we got a bit to do. Our work is not yet done. Leave a like if, you're if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. And VNSNOW.com. Check out VNSNOW.com for more politicking. Although not quite this intense. Catch y'all in the next one.